Hi, I'm Tracy from The Cake Craftery. Today I'm going to show you how to make some quick and easy rice paper ghosts to decorate for Halloween or to pop on top of a cake. You will need some rice paper, otherwise known as Vietnamese spring roll wrappers. They come in all sorts of different brands and sizes and you can get squares and rounds. For this project, I'm using two different rounds. You'll also need some polystyrene balls. You can just use one size or, or you can vary your sizes and a few skewers. You will also need a small amount of vegetable shortening, Crisco, and a dish that's big enough to fit a sheet of rice paper in comfortably. Break your skewers into five or six centimeter lengths and insert one length of skewer into each polystyrene ball. And then coat with a thin coat of your vegetable shortening. This is just to stop the rice paper sticking later on. Some pieces of styrofoam or polystyrene come in handy to stand your skewers up and to dry your ghosts on. Alternately, you can wrap the ball in a plastic wrap and sellotape that onto the skewer, but um, we avoid using plastic whenever we can. Pour some warm water into your dish. The warmer it is, the faster the rice paper will soften. Working with one sheet of rice paper at a time, soak it until it's nice and pliable, but for no longer than that, you don't want it to go mushy. Lift it out and drop off some of the excess water and just be careful the rice paper doesn't stick to itself. Then drape it over the polystyrene ball and spread out the edges. It's important to spread it out like this, otherwise the opening will be too narrow to get the polystyrene ball out later on. So just bear that in mind. Here I'm going to use a slightly larger polystyrene ball with the larger size of rice paper sheet. Um, this one can also stand slightly higher. When you're breaking your bamboo skewers and inserting them into the polystyrene, you, you want to be sure that the rice paper will sit down on the polystyrene and not up um, just dangling free in the air because it will inevitably stick to itself. And you'll never get the polystyrene ball out and you won't get that nice ghost shape either. You can see here as my water temperature has cooled somewhat, it is taking a little longer for the rice paper to soak. Now, sometimes if you don't want to work in too much of a hurry, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to have that option for a lower temperature and a longer soaking time. So just go with what you're comfortable with. You might be interested to know that rice paper is generally a mix of rice flour and tapioca flour with different quantities. Now, the smaller sheets I've used here are about half and half and they're slightly more opaque. The larger sheets are a lot more tapioca than rice flour and they're more glassy or transparent. And you can use these to your advantages in all sorts of rice paper applications and cake decorating. So it is a good thing to bear in mind when you're buying your rice paper sheets. I always like to keep a packet of each. Now you can see from the side view that I haven't formed necks uh, on these ghosts um, below the balls because like I said earlier, you want to be able to get the polystyrene balls out through that gap. So it does need to be as wide or wider than the ball itself. Leave to dry for a few hours and then just check how firm your rice paper is. If, if the top, if you could tap on the top and it makes a tapping sound, uh, you're probably good to go. I like to take the ball out while there's still a bit of flexibility in the bottom half of the ghost. And so if you do have a bit of trouble getting it out, uh, you can just open it apart ever so slightly. If you do this when it's completely dry, it will just crack. Um, and then I can, you can use the skewer just to help you ease it out. Here's the one that I coated with cling film. It is actually easy to get out because the cling film is attached to the skewer and you can just pull it out by holding on to that. So you can see again, they need to be dry enough to stand unsupported, but with a little bit of flexibility. I would have never have got this larger ball out of this one if I'd let it dry completely. Here I'm looking for a good spot to draw the face. Uh, you don't want too many wrinkles where you're going to draw if possible. And I like to have it so that the, the sheet, I suppose it is, is, is flying out the back rather than the front. So they look like they're moving forwards. So I've chosen a smooth spot and I'm just using an edible marker to draw on the eyes and mouth. Now my bark is about to run out of color. So I'm going to switch to something else shortly. Of course, if you're making these ghosts just for decorations and not to go on a cake, uh, you don't need to use an edible marker, you can just use any sort of marker or pen, or paint. Mm -hmm. 
My edible marker did run out, so I've switched to my fluid writer and some black airbrush colour. Of course, a paintbrush would have been quicker for this style of ghost face, but I wanted to experiment with some other ghost faces after that, so I did elect to use this fluid writer, which I enjoy using a lot. And no, I'm not sponsored by them. There are all sorts of different ghost faces and expressions you can draw, so have a little bit of fun with it. Now your ghosts are done and uh, they should dry to completely firm and slightly brittle, but they'll be strong at the same time. Um, I happen to have these little battery operated LED lights for another project, another cake project I did earlier. So I thought they'd be fun to put inside the ghosts. Um, of course you don't need to do this. Uh, if you could use fairy lights if you're just using these ghosts for a Halloween decoration and put one over each light. Or you can just use them as is. Now the lights are a little yellow um, and you can paint over the, the uh, bulb part with a bit of opaque white paint just to tone down the yellowness or you could find other lights I got these on Alibaba I think I'm sure you can get them on Amazon or or Wish or any of those um, websites a warning here you do need to be extra extra vigilant with anything with these little batteries um, near children because they're terrible things to be swallowing um, so please be very wary of that don't use them at all if young children are going to be a, um, unsupervised or anywhere near these batteries. Just use string lights or no lights at all. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to see more as I make them, please hit the like button and also the subscribe. Thank you.